Hi everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to the dungeon. My name is Robin and today is Lamp Working 101.97. Today we're gonna talk about the hexagonal shape. And this is like a really awesome shape to make, especially if you're tired of just making everything a solid round. So this can be a lot of fun to explore. And the tool that you're gonna need is a pair of mini mashers. These are really gonna be helpful here. But if you don't have a pair, it's okay. If you want to use a pair of tweezers on this flat part right in the center here to squeeze the glass, you can do the same thing as well. So if you have either one of these tools, you're good to go. The other magical little ingredient I have on this bead, thanks to Patrick, is the silver foil inside. And I'm telling you, the silver foil combined with the colors, combined with the light, just sets this whole bead on fire, like a fire opal prismatic effect. It's so cool, and I'm really excited to share it with you guys. So on that note, let's get right into it. Thanks so much for joining me, and I hope you're all doing safe and well out there. I will see you next time in the dungeon. All right, so we're gonna start this bead out with a base color of Ephetri Pea Green. And I'm just gonna add this to the mandrel and get about, I don't know, maybe about a half an inch or so of glass here, like always. But um, I, I, it might be a little bit bigger than that, but I, I wouldn't go uh, any bigger. If anything, I would make it a little smaller than this. Either way, I'm going to get this into a nice barrel shape bead. And the thinner you can get this layer, the better. Because you add quite a bit more to it. You know, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. So the thinner you can get this first layer, the better. And I'm just trying to thin it out a little bit more here by tapering the edges. And then I'm gonna go right into a piece, ooh, be careful there, <laughs> of silver foil. And I want to make sure I'm using silver foil. It's just a little bit meatier than silver leaf and it holds up in the heat. Uh, looks great as well. So try to get use silver foil here and I'm just burnishing it down really well and getting ready to add my, um, my bit of, I'm going to encase it in this grass green. And as long as I don't overheat the silver, it should stay nice and silvery. If you notice that it is burning off, then you're getting it too hot. So be careful here, but you want to just establish that base color of green with the silver uh, remaining silvery underneath. <laughs> so after we have that on there, I just want to get it back into our shape of the um, barrel shape bead just rolling it out, smoothing everything down. This is the last time you're gonna be able to work on the actual base bead here. So do your best to make it as nice as you need it to be. All right, so now what we're gonna do is start kind of pushing glass around. I'm gonna get one side hot and use a razor blade tool to push into the glass nice and evenly. I'm gonna do this in six segments. Now you can use a butter knife if you would like. You wanna make sure it's relatively thin this razor blade tool was really easy um, to find and put together. All it is is an X-Acto blade handle with the razor blade on the end. So hopefully you'll have something like this laying around if you want to play with this technique. All right, so once you have those lines established, you want to run your first color right down the middle of each one. And again, you wanna keep this segmented, so do your best not to have the colors that you're working on here touch each other. So now what I want to do is start using the butter knife, which is also an important tool for me. You can use anything to shape with, really. But the butter knife is helping me to kind of 
pull in those edges. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start to heat up each individual segment and pinch it just a little bit to straighten it out and even it up with the mini mashers. Again, if you need to use um, the midsection of your tweezers, you can use that as well. Be careful of it overheating though. Okay, so I'm just squeezing and pulling in all these lines. And once I've done that to each one, then I'll go back and reestablish the profile of each segment with the butter knife. Or again, whatever tool is your favorite shaping tool for this process. And I do like to shape from the underside so the glass isn't falling but I like to do this pressing on the top side because I can't see it any other way. So it's really a process of going back and forth from shaping the profile and then squeezing it because every time you go in and shape the profile, you're flattening it a little bit. And then you wanna bring it back out by squeezing it. So the next color that we have here is the topaz. And this is just a beautiful color and we are going to do the same thing. We're gonna run it from the top all the way down to the bottom of each one of those parts. This does get easier after you establish the first lines. They're a lot easier to see and they're more spaced apart. So things become a lot easier as the bead gets larger, which is kind of nice. Okay, so once I have the color on here, again, I'm going to go ahead and use my knife to just pull the edges in a little bit. And I do this just each one individually. And then I'll go ahead and heat each one up again and squeeze it down gently with the mini mashers. And I always notice that when I squeeze it down this time, it will kind of push the glass out again to the edges, just enough to where yeah, I just need to pull them back in for my own personal preference. <laughs> but you can do the shaping however you want, as long as you keep these six segments established. All right, our next color is the gold ruby, one of my favorites. And because the bead is getting larger and larger, it's easier every time you add your color now because you can see where you need to add it, or at least I can see where I need to add it better. A little sloppy there, but as long as I get the color on as evenly as I can get it on each segment, I'm doing okay. And when I finish my swipe, there's kind of a bulkier area of color here. So what I wanna do is turn my mandrel around so I can get to that area and just heat and swipe those bits down to make a nicer, I don't know, transition of color there. And it'll be easier to shape up in a minute here. And you do want to watch your heat. You don't want to get anything so hot to where uh, the fins or the segments start to bend or fold over and touch another one. Uh, you've come this far already. So just make sure that you continue to really watch your heat here as you bring everything together again. So as you heat each individual segment, you are just going to make sure that uh, you go in and press it real nice and try to straighten everything up if you need to. If one segment is too close to another one, this is also a good time to kind of shift it into the center. There almost seems like there's a lot going on here, but it really is actually quite simple to do. I just, you know, you're just spending a lot of time 
uh, tooling the glass, which I absolutely love to do. So for me, a bead like this is really, really kind of like soothing to do. And I hope it is for you too. I don't want to, you know, if I have a bead that's giving me anxiety, I usually tend to stay away <laughs> until, unless I can break through it, you know, and feel good in the end. Okay, so we are just about ready to put our final color down. Just a little bit more tooling here and there. And any, you know, I'm always gonna follow up with the mini mashers after I use the butter knife, just to straighten everything out again from the flattening uh, of the, the knife. And there's our, our almost finished bead. Looking good on the profile. And we're going to finish up by adding our intense blue. And this color looks so good with the gold ruby underneath. It created the most beautiful violet. It made me so happy. And this last bit of color was really easy to run down the bead. Working with the transparents is really nice because they're a little bit um, slightly stiffer to use than opaque colors for the most part at least so it was easy it's easy to kind of work this bead out with a little bit uh, of stiffer glass okay so all my color is on here all I have to do now is do all of my final shaping and we'll be done so I'm just gonna run through the whole process again by getting my edges nice and smoothed into uh, a curved profile on each arm. And then that will flatten it down a little bit. So then I'm gonna go ahead and heat each arm up individually. And sometimes I'll heat each arm up to the point where the glass is almost sagging but it seems to help kind of pull it into the center. So when I press it out, it's more of a nice crescent shape. I hope that makes sense. I'm not sure. Sometimes I'm not sure if anything I say makes sense. <laughs> it's not always easy to explain what you're doing with the glass, but you can see it visually and hopefully you can get it all straight from here. And on that note, I'm just going to finish up by giving it a little bit more tooling, checking out the profile here, and just kind of straightening things up before I put it away. So this is your last time to really give it that nice final even shaping that you want. Okay, you guys, I am going to sign off for now and I will see you in another video coming up very soon. I hope you guys enjoyed this one as much as I did in the sunlight and just in the light in general. It just, uh, just the whole bead came to life here. So I hope it puts a smile on your face as much as it did mine. And on that note, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>